muted finally. Um, wait for the feedback to stop. Um, just wanted to ask, where does this leave you, this uh, draw with Aston Villa? Um, yeah, well, it's a draw against a good team and uh, performance is good. I thought we deserve to win the game, but we, but we don't. And so we come through a difficult patch knowing that we want to improve. But where I think it's left us is that we saw a lot of signs today in the attitude of the team, some of the play, without having the final bit and the final third. Um, it leaves us with having to do more of the same because the table's still tight. We've had a funny patch where it remains really close at the top of the league. So um, off the back of a really good run, we've had a t difficult little time. And today I saw some really good signs that I liked. And I thought N'Golo Kante was excellent today. He used him twice in a row. Um, does it kind of show that his durability is back as well as his importance? Yeah, I, I think so with NG. I spoke to him a lot between the games just to make sure he was OK. But this year I've tried to manage him in different ways and he's missed some of the Champions League games as we, as we felt we were progressing. So I think he's in a good place and he can do different roles for us. I think people, I feel, confuse the idea of him just being a defensive midfield player. He's got capabilities to do a deeper role, but he's got great capabilities to leave midfield and, and win balls back half the pitch and to, to make, make decisive runs higher the pitch with the ball. So um, it was great to see him get through those two games with a lot of comfort. John Cross. Uh, hello, Frank. I've, I've seen you, you uh, quoted on, on TV saying that a month ago you would have won that game. I, I mean, is, is that kind of typical of just a little bit of lack of belief or, or, or not belief as much as confidence, I should say, you know, just from the team at the moment. Yeah, I, I think so, John. I think, you know, when things are going well, it's pretty easy. We're on a long unbeaten run and we were playing well. But not, not too many levels up from what we were playing today. I thought today the focus of the team was good. Some of the play through the lines, particularly on our left-hand side with Chilwell and, uh, and Christian and Mason, which was really good um, against a really good team. So I, when I said I thought we were, maybe would have won it a month ago, I, I just felt like when you're in a good run, the, the ball goes in the back of the net more, Christian's chances, the chances at the end of the game, the goal that happens when you've got a man down, um, unlucky, whatever you want to call it. Um, and that's just football. So I think it's a positive for our lads that, that, to understand that and say that it's a point we wanted more. But if we keep playing with the same attitude, then we will get back to, to winning, which we've had a short period where we haven't been. Just on Olivier, he, I don't think there's many better in, in, in the Premier League at getting across the front post and scoring headers at the, at the front post, is there? No, I think if you're going to deliver for, for Oli in the right areas, he gets, he gets in a position and he gets contact, really good contact on the ball. And that's why he scored goals. That's why he's been a, a regular scorer wherever he's been. Um, and he did it for us today, as he's done it for us this season and in restart. So, all credit to him. Can I just ask you about the COVID situation, Frank? About Man, obviously Man mm. City. It must be, you know, it must be a concern as a manager of football players. You know about the risk to them, about the concerns of the fixture list, and then you've got Morecambe after that. It's it feels like it's a really key time at, at, at the moment for for the Premier League, for Premier League clubs and players. Yeah, I think it is a key time and, um, and a tough time. And I think we felt that come in uh, as Tier 4 has come in and uh, the surge of COVID. Um, so we have to get safety paramount. I believe that's why the game's been called off tonight because of the, the fear of the spread within the squad for Man City. Um, so um, from our point of view in terms of that, I'll find out more over the next day or two to make sure it has to be safe for the two teams. If not, the game won't go ahead. I think the Premier League has their directives on that. But yeah, it's a tough time. I'm not... I wouldn't say... Uh, I'm not. I'm not surprised because at the moment the the the, uh, the, the public and the, the way that COVID is in the UK um, is difficult for everybody, and football isn't very different at all times. And so we'll just have to make see what the Premier League come up with, but safety will be paramount. Thank you. Frank, I just want to ask you, six changes tonight. I mean, it was the sheer sort of nature of the turnaround, probably because of the short games back-to-back. Uh, -back. What is that fine balance when you're managing a team during this Christmas period between momentum, confidence and, of course, fitness? It was, it was a mixture for us today because um, I had some ideas to make changes anyway because I think we have a squad and people ready to play. And, uh, you know, I can't complain about the two-day turnaround, which I did, and, and not try and use the squad to a degree. Um, Reese James has got a small hamstring issue. And I'm not saying that's why I has to be played. I probably would have played him anyway. Um Thiago Silva, I think at his age, I had to consider the games. Kurt Zim has played a lot of games himself. Um, Oli and Tammy to play a game each made sense to me because they both give a similar output. They're both playing well. And so the changes were, 
to try and keep a bit of balance in the team, but to try and freshen it up. And off the back of not a great performance against Arsenal, um, that kind of made my decision um, a bit more as well. So um, I, I, w- I was pleased. I, I'm not I'm not displeased of anything tonight, other than the fact that we that we conceded that goal and we didn't really concede many chances in the game and we didn't score another goal, which would have given us some comfort. But I was pleased with the players that came in. I was pleased with the attitude. Um, yeah. Also, I just want to ask you about the incident leading up to El Ghazi's goal. There was a couple of incidents. There was the handball initially, and then there was the confrontation between Christensen and Jack Grealish. What was sort of your intake, and do you think there was sort of should have been a break in the possession beforehand? I think the I think it was handball. I think it was handball on the line. The the fourth official was very close to us. The linesman was very close. I'm not sure why it wasn't given. It should have been handball. Um, in terms of the Grealish and Christensen thing, I, I haven't seen it again. I didn't feel there was much in it at the time. I'm not sure if it was a foul or not. I was just concerned as soon as Andreas stayed down that the ball was going to come in our box and be a man down, which it turned out to be. But I haven't, I haven't reviewed that referee wide. Yes, Simon Johnson. You there, Simon? Oh, let's go to Nick at PA. Uh, hi, Frank. Um, obviously, Callum Hudson had a, a good game tonight. Looks very lively. And um, is one of the things that maybe goes under the radar is the, the range and quality of his passing. And, and what uh, would you like to see from him next, of him to get a run of games in the team? Well, I, I liked his performance today, and I liked the range of his passing. It was very evident in the first half. A couple of great crossfield balls and and some of his feet and movement and touches were great. The, the, the obvious next part is end product because, you know, we want to see Callum, as I think he did against Arsenal when he came on, was to go 1v1, to be confident to go 1v1 because he has the ability to do it. And to get crosses in like he did for Tammy at the week at uh, Arsenal um, and to get goals and arrive in the box because that's the, the level of top wingers in the Premier League when you look around at the numbers that the top wingers produce in the Premier League in recent years. And Callum definitely has capabilities and that will be the next stage for him. James Robson. Hi, Frank. You, you mentioned this difficult period that, that you've been in. That that seems to have coincided with Hakim being out of the team. Is is that a coincidence, or do you just do, do you really miss what he brings to the team? And, and also, is there any news on when we can see him back? Yeah, it, it's. I, I don't think it's a coincidence. I can't rely completely on it. You never know, dear. The, the 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 level of, of how much you you affected even if you know it's clear it seems clear in points because uh, that's not that's not that's, that's not something certain but I think with Hakim the way he was playing he was being very effective for us in terms of assists goal creation chance creation and some goals and also a real confidence in the way he was playing and it helped we were very fluid at the time as he got injured against Leeds he was in a great run of form so I think it has been a, um, a point going to miss players of that level. Um, when they drop out and we and we want him back. Um, where is he at? Um, there's a possibility he could be fit for Manchester City if he goes ahead on Sunday. Um, I'll know that later on in the week, but he's, he's certainly progressed into the point where he's very close to fitness. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. We'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Cheers. 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 Cheers.